What is going on everybody? My name is Noah. I work for PhoneDog.com and I'm here with another Phone Dog dog fight between one of the most uh, popular and often asked about phones in the history of, uh, well in the history of Phone Dog anyway. One I get a lot of questions about all the time, the ever popular LG Voyager for Verizon. This is the titanium version, but really same thing as the older version, they just updated it with a new color a few months back. And one of the newer kids on the block, the AT&T Quickfire from PCD. Now, both of these phones are uh, similar because you call them messaging phones instead of full-on smartphones. They both got a touchscreen on the front, and then they both have a QWERTY keyboard for uh, easier messaging. As you can see, the uh, Voyager has got this kind of unique dual screen that, whoa, the Quickfire's taken off. Uh, it's this, this dual screen layout, it's got a full-on touch screen on the front and then it's got the clamshell that opens horizontally and you open it up and it's got the full QWERTY board with a secondary screen on the inside. So it's kind of like the uh, the NV and NV, or the V and then the NV and then the NV2 also from LG and Verizon with the uh, you know horizontally opening with the difference with the Voyager. It's got the full touch screen on the front as well as full plethora of features. And then the Quickfire has got a touch screen and it slides up sidekick style with the keypad underneath. Now, you might have been thinking this whole time, dude, what about sidekick? Where's the sidekick? Why isn't that in the dogfight? Uh, basically, two reasons. One is I wanted to compare, these are both uh, touch screen based phones, so it seemed like a good comparison. Two is that lots of, lots of uh, rumors kicking around now that some new sidekicks will be coming soon. I've been following up uh, some rumors coming out of, P out of CES, rather, that PCD is working on some new sidekicks. I followed up with PCD, waiting to get some more information on that. As soon as we have it, we'll give it to you on PhoneDog.com. Um, but in the meantime, we figured, you know what? These are both 3G phones. They both have a touchscreen and a keyboard. People always ask about the Voyager. A lot of people have been asking about the Quickfire because it's new. So it seems like a good dogfight. Which is better? Well, I'll give you a hint. The Voyager is awesome. Quickfire is an awesome idea. Let's take a look. All right, so on the top here, it's the uh, Voyager from Verizon and LG. And on the bottom, or I guess we'll put it over on the right now, is the Quickfire from PCD and AT&T. It's got this nifty, uh, it's almost like a little video game. If you're really bad at video games like me to unlock the Quickfire. Touch the falling key, and I can't do it. There we go. All right, so both of these devices, uh, the, the Quickfire is pretty new. The Voyager's been around for a little while, but it's still kind of the flagship Verizon messaging phone. And when I say messaging phone, I mean you've got a QWERTY board, you've got a, a full complement of features for email and IM and that kind of stuff, but it's not a full-on smartphone, so you're not going to be syncing this with your computer or uh, installing a whole lot of you know apps on your own like you would with a Windows mobile device or you know uh, Symbian. Android, that kind of thing. Uh, but if you're looking for a phone that in addition to being a phone can also give you access to your email and your IM and stuff like that on the go, uh, messaging phones are often a good choice because they're cheaper than smartphones, both in terms of the initial cost of the phone and the monthly data fees. Uh, you definitely will pay more for data with a full-on smartphone on AT&T or Verizon than you will a messaging phone. Uh, basically, you know, the two devices, my, my knock on, on the devices, on both of them, would be the size. But that's, a, that's a, a subjective thing. A lot of people don't really mind at all. And, um, you know, so if you don't mind kind of the bulk, that you have to, that's the price you have to pay when you have the, uh, the QWERTY board. You know, whether it's a clamshell or a sliding form factor, you can see, you know, compared to something like uh, the Dare for Verizon, which you know is only one layer with a touch screen and doesn't have the two layers with the full keyboard, you know, you're gonna have a thicker device either way that you go. Um, as I said before, you know, the, the Quickfire kind of mimics the, the popular T-Mobile sidekick line, and then it's got this center mounted screen that slides up with the keyboard underneath. And it doesn't have an accelerometer, but it does auto-rotate. So you can use the phone just as a touchscreen phone in horizontal orientation, or when you open the slide the screen up to reveal the keyboard, it automatically rotates to widescreen mode. Uh, kind of a similar thing with the Voyager. When you're using the touchscreen, it's only, there's no accelerometer or anything, and you're only got it in 
the uh, horizontal orientation, I'm sorry, the vertical orientation. And then when you open it up, you use it in widescreen mode, the difference being, of course, that you've got uh, a screen on the interior. So a minor knock uh, on the Voyager is that you don't get touchscreen functionality when you've got the phone open. It's not that big of a deal, really, because you've got a D-pad that you can get around with, you can get to all your, all your uh, you know, features using the D-pad, and it's not really a problem. But, you know, unlike the sliding, the sliding device, <coughs> excuse me, uh, unlike on the sliding device, you, know, you can't actually use the touchscreen when you've got the phone open, and here you can, and you know, it's just one of those things, like, functional-wise, it might not matter, but uh, if you're going to have a touchscreen phone, it's kind of handy to use the touchscreen all the time. As far as the actual functionality goes, uh, the Voyager has an edge, I think, in, in basically every, uh, every category you can think of. Uh, the actual screen size, you know, roughly the same. The, uh, the quick fire, a little bit, little bit larger screen in general on the touch screen. But as far as functionality goes, the Voyager, I think, is just, just easier to use. The touch screen is more responsive. Uh, with the touch screen on the quick fire, and I did a separate video just on the quick fire, you can check this out. Scrolling can sometimes be a little bit of a pain. You kind of have to get used to the to the touch screen, but even then, you sometimes have to uh, have to tap a few times uh, to select things. And selecting small buttons can be a little bit a little bit of a bother. It's just not as responsive a touch screen as I would have liked to have seen. And the keyboard itself is is smaller on the quick fire. You can see on the Voyager, the keys are huge. And this is one of the best parts of the phone. If you're gonna you know, pay the price carrying around a bulky phone, you wanna have uh, a really big, easy to use keyboard. And on the Voyager, you definitely get it. Also, uh, and if you're a Voyager owner, or you're an owner or a fan of the Envy series, uh, or the Alias for that matter, also on Verizon, a Samsung phone, uh, you know that this little kind of mini laptop configuration can be kind of cool. And you can angle the screen so you can have it flat or you can have it kind of looking up at you, um, you know, it locks in at kind of this uh, just past 90 degree angle. And this can be kind of nice when you're, when you're tapping out messages. You know, you get a little bit of privacy that way if you don't want the people in front. If you're in class and you don't want your teacher to, kids, don't text in class, all right? Pay attention. Um, but, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to, uh, we'll send a message to 555-1212 there to be able to look up at your screen while you're typing. And again, nice big keyboard, full numerical layout, full D-pad, your two soft keys, you know, uh, really plenty of room to move around with your thumbs. The keys are nice and responsive. Uh, I do kind of wish the space bar was in the middle, but you know, that's kind of my one real complaint with the keyboard. Otherwise, really great keyboard to use on the Voyager. On the Quickfire, the keyboard is, uh, we'll go back and we'll send a message instead. So you can see, sometimes it takes a you know a couple taps to get to. Um, the keyboard on the Quickfire isn't bad, but it's definitely smaller, and it does have the space bar in the middle, which I like. And it's certainly usable. It's not you know it's not at all a bad keyboard, but uh, it's a little bit smaller um, than the Voyager. And the top row, my thumbs kind of bump up against the bottom of the, the display panel there, which, you know, a minor inconvenience. Not a huge deal, but a little bit of a pain. Um, it's, again, the price you pay, this time, uh, the price you pay with this form factor. It's inevitable, you know, that that's gonna be there somewhere. Uh, they did a nice job on the sides here of angling the surfaces, kind of beveling them out so that your thumbs have a little more room, a little more natural of a feel. But on top, you do kind of bump up against the uh, the keys once in a while. Also, there's no D-pad on this phone, so it, it's only... Uh, and you do have a D-pad down here in the corner as well, not as big of a D-pad as, uh, as on the Voyager there. There's no center-mounted selection key, but you do have a D-pad so you can get around that way as well. Uh, in terms of actual you know, functionality and features when it comes to messaging, both of them obviously do multimedia and um, and text messaging, and you can save, you know, drafts and all that stuff you're used to. Uh, also, IM services. So and these are both 3G phones, as I said. AT&T obviously runs on GSM, and it's got the 3G service. Verizon CDMA with their Evdu 3G service. Um, so in the AT&T, you can go AOL Instant Messenger, Windows Live, or Yahoo. And on the Voyager. You can go
And the Voyager, you can go with their uh, the Verizon Mobile IM app, AOL, Windows Live, or Yahoo as well. Uh, they also both do mobile email. With mobile email, get access to your preferred email service, such as AOL, AIM, Yahoo, Windows Live. That's terrific, thank you. Uh, so this is a Java app that connects over the network. You're not going to get full on uh, the same kind of uh, email service on one of these phones as you will on a smartphone uh, in terms of you know being able to have all the different options with context integration and syncing and having your email you know available offline. It's just not quite as robust. Um, but that being said, you're not paying the full on price that you would for a full smartphone. So on the AT and T, you have to uh, you have to pay the five dollars. I mean, on the Voyager, rather, it'll prompt you to pay the five dollars extra for their service for the mobile email. So we'll get that loaded up. And in the meantime, we'll show you on AT and T. You have a choice from Yahoo, AOL, AIM, Windows Live, AT and T, Yahoo, Bell South, et cetera, et cetera, other providers. Noticeably absent from this list is Gmail. If you want to do your Gmail, you're going to have to do it uh, over the web if you're on AT&T. AT&T and Google, just, uh, I don't know what the deal is, but they don't get along when it comes to putting Gmail access on AT&T uh, phones, except for their smartphones. So on the Verizon phone, you've got Yahoo, Windows Live, AOL, AIM, Verizon.net, Other. And then if you go into Other, 